Stampin' Best Friends, it's me Maggie. I am here for Beat the Winter Blahs and we are going to make this really cute and simple Easter box. So let me tell you how we're going to do this. We're actually going to use our Simply Scored and we're going to take a piece of cardstock that's 8 by 10. So just take that piece of 8.5 by 11, we're going to do a little bit of trimming and then our extra bits, it's going to be our handles. So there'll be not a lot of waste with this project. So let's dive in and start scoring. We're going to score at 2.5. Get a nice firm score. Five, seven and a half, and add ten. Then we're going to flip and we're going to score at two and a half. I just totally messed that up. Anyways, we'll see how it goes. There we go. We're good to go. So now I've got all scored and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and put it together. Together our box, we're going to need two-way tape or sticky strip. You can see I've got a dimensional that likes to hang out. It's because all my adhesives live in a drawer together. We'll take some paper snips. We're also going to take a bone filler. We're going to first start off by going, running our bone folder along all of our score lines. Next thing we're going to do, take our paper snips. And I love the paper snips for this purpose. This little tiny flap here, we're just going to cut that right off. Now this is a modified larger version of a 2468 box, which is probably the very first box most of you made if you've been in just doing 3D items. I remember how proud I was all those years ago of producing that box. So you're just going to cut right up to the score line to create four flaps, and this will form the bottom of your box. The nice thing about there being four flaps is it really creates a strong bottom. Now if you're going to put something really heavy in it, you may also want to just cut a two and a you know, maybe a two and three eighths by two and three eighths piece of uh, chipboard to put on the inside just to strengthen it up. Just so remember it is just paper. Now to put together our box, we're going to decide which side. We're going to put this side, so that's a little tidier. We're going to take some sticky strip. We're going to apply it right along the seam. This will ensure better contact and it will give us a much cleaner edge. Just going to take off that part and then we're going to fold, fold, fold and see my paper sliding around. That's entirely normal. Those of you that are members of the community know how I always have some sort of sliding issue. I think part of it is because I do this at a counter in my stamp room, but I'm quite short. I'm not, I'm 5'2" for those of you who don't know. But what happens is I, I find I'm always kind of reaching, so I'm always so hyperextending things, so things get bumped around. Plus, I'm generally kind of klutzy. So there's our box, and then to put it together, you have your seam along the back. So you wanna make sure that you put down your flaps so that you have a nice, clean, the last flap is the one along the front. And I'm actually just gonna take some snail to hold these down. You could also use sticky strip, but I'm just going to expedite things because goodness knows you do not want to watch me make a box for 10 hours. Now I have a three inch wide piece, I think it's three by 11 piece of soft settles. It's not soft settles, they're just settles now. We keep changing the names of things. And I've actually gone ahead and scored this so we don't get into an issue with it not wrapping around the box nicely. So right around the back where you have that back seam, there it is. I've created just the same thing as we had in the box, a little tab, and that's going to ensure we get really good. My snails decided to die. If you're looking for perfection stamping, I am not the right stamper for you. So we'll get, we're just going to take and add our sticky strip, peel off our back, and use sticky strip on a box just to get better contact. So we're going to take and add that right onto the box, lining up that score line. And then we're going to take, wrap it right around the box. And then again, just fold along that one and we'll add a little more sticky strip. And we are going to get into the fun stuff in just a minute now that we've done the nuts and bolts, hard work of assembling the box. So we want to make sure everything is nice and straight, that the seams or paper line up. Plus you can see the pattern doesn't match, so that's on the back, so it doesn't matter as much. So I'm going to zoom in and we're going to work on our handle.
So I have a one inch wide strip of, to do our handle we have a one inch strip of cardstock and we are going to take and place it here and here. And you can decide how large or small you want this to be. To secure it, just recommend a tiny bit of snail and then you can secure it on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and use sticky strip just to reinforce it. I expect I'll be using this with my son. So and I'm going to show you a really nice way to decorate the handle to really add just a little bit of visual interest. Oh, I'm having hard times with this stuff. I think we also see I'm long overdue for a manicure. I noticed Rhonda had some really nice nails in her video. We were debating if that's a business expense or not. So if you were an accountant or a CPA, let us know. I'm pretty sure it's not here in Canada. I think it's pushing your luck. It's not like we're hand models. So you're going to add that. And then we're going to take the Candy Dots Bad Races. I haven't used these a whole lot, but I really like the way they look. So we'll take out two of those. And then we're just going to take, we're going to add a, oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a little bit of Wisteria Wonder, this little flower from the Itty Bitty Punch Pack. We'll punch two of those out. Woo! And we're going to add those on with some snail. So we're going to add our flowers on with a little bit of snail. I'm just going to center that down a little bit. Don't put it too close to the top where it may rip. And then you're just going to punch through all three layers. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease, as my mother would say. Take your bread. Position it, and then you're going to butterfly the back. And then we're going to open up our settles. And you can see I keep all my candy dots in one of the half mount wood, half size wood mount cases. And I'm going to take one of the pinks. So we love color coordination, don't we? And then we're going to flip around and do that again on the other side. So now we've got our handle on, we've got both sides decorated, and then I've gone ahead and put everything else in the box. So the rest is so, so simple, you don't need to watch me do that. So we use the deco label framelits to cut out, stamp this in some Wisteria Wonder. You can see really close there, I've added just a little tiny bit of glitter with the dazzling diamonds and the two-way glue pen to the bunny's tail. And the very last thing is just tied this little bit of chevron ribbon on. And that's it. You have a beautiful box ready to go for a little bit of stamping fun. So I hope you enjoyed that project. Can't wait to see what you might be able to come up with and be sure to play along with our prize patrol. Thanks guys, I'll talk to you soon.